Uh, Minister, the OECD report on reducing Ireland's transport emissions talks about deep transformation that needs to be reflected in our spatial and transport planning, which we all know needs to build, be built around real investment in rail. Yet, Minister, in the first major rail carriage investment uh, under your tenure, Galway City has been ignored, and at loan, which is supposed to be coming a new city with three major rail lines, gets just one morning train to Westport and another one from Tullamore. To scale the challenge we face in decarbonising transport, as highlighted in this OECD report, will require transformative level of behavioural and systems changed. I was very pleased to participate at the Climate Change Advisory Council's and OECD's team's launch event on the 5th of October alongside the new Environmental Director at the OECD and Chair of the Advisory Council. My department engaged collaboratively with the OECD team over the past year in the preparation of their review. The perspective in this report that our transport system fosters growing car use and emissions by design rightly reflects a systemic challenge that will require a systemic response. Our everyday transport and mobility patterns have been deeply embedded through a legacy of our past dispersed low-density settlement patterns and policies and long-ingrained mindsets that have established the primacy of private car use over accessibility and more sustainable modes of travel. The report's key findings are clear. The most impactful and transformative measures we need to scale up and accelerate to achieve our highly ambitious emissions targets in transport are increased road space reallocation, the mainstreaming of on-demand shared services, and enhanced communication strategies to encourage and support the required behavioural change in how we travel. All of these measures are reflected in our ambitions as set out in the Government's National Sustainable Mobility Policy and through the work of our SMP Leadership Group and Pathfinder Programme, which I launched recently. The well-being lens approach that the OECD team have used in the report will be key to ensuring that policies do carbonise to decarbonise transport are framed in terms of the wider benefits to be achieved in terms of quality of life and health benefits. While electrification of our car fleet will remain an integral part of how we will achieve our 2030 emissions targets, we cannot rely on technology alone. We need to move away from systems and policies that continue to engender car dependency and hinder the possibility of efficiently managing our public space and providing quality access through more sustainable and healthy transport modes and thereby diminish public well-being. The findings and approach set out in the report will greatly inform the direction of travel in the transport chapter of the next Climate Action Plan and the further work in delivering the Sustainable Thank Mobility you. Action Plan. Minister, the uh, OECD report says that de deep transformation in Ireland means promoting development within our cities. But this is being no ignored west of the Shannon in the expansion of our rail services by Irish Rail. And while I welcome the additional morning service to Mayo, why was the Galway to Athlone rail line ignored, Minister? This is despite Galway City being choked with traffic. This is despite the outer ring road being long fingered again. This is despite the government allocating €3 million Euro to provide a passing loop at Ordmore railway station 18 months ago. And this is despite the existing services from Athlone and Banisloe into Galway City being more akin to an Indian rail service than an Irish rail services because of the overcrowding on it. Firstly, Deputy, I, I absolutely agree with you. Part of this transformation has to be, in particular, the development of rail services in our cities, Cork, Galway, Waterford, Limerick, to be counterbalanced in the development, excessive reliance on development of the East Coast and of Dublin region. And it's important we do invest in the rail services of those cities so that they have centres of uh, scale that can be counterweights to the greater Dublin area. So I absolutely agree with that. That's why yesterday, government announced what's a really significant, important decision in the investment of 170 million in Waterford to improve the rail service, put in a new sustainability bridge. That's why we're investing the first top line item in our recovery and resilience fund in European uh, funding, which we had under that, went to metropolitan rail services in Cork. That's why 
we are starting the process now of reopening the Fo Shannon Foynes line as part of an also commission as we did in the recent uh, budget, uh, in the Pathfinder projects rather, to put in a new station in the likes of Moy Ross to give new communities or communities the, these new services. And I absolutely agree with you, Galway and the West has to be part of that as well. The passing loop you mentioned in Arnmore, but the potential as well for well further improvements around Kent, uh, Kent Station and also the potential for double tracking and improving the overall level of service, particularly I would agree with you, from the likes of Athenry or Athlone into Galway so that people can commute by rail rather than by car, which is the curse of Galway's transport system at this present time. There is no restriction for the political side. Parry, brother. Uh, Minister. The first step that could be taken is to utilise the existing rail network uh, that we have in the west of Ireland. And I want a commitment from you that we get our fair share of the 41 new carriages that are coming on track. Minister, I want a commitment from you in the first instance that we'll get two new rail sets based in Athlone. The city designate that everyone seems to be forgetting about. One that shuttles between Galway and Banisloe and Athlone, connecting passengers with the Dublin uh, uh, Mayo rail services, but also providing commuter services into Galway city. And second, the second set to be used to shuttle between Mayo and Athlone to connect the Roscommon and Mayo passengers with the Galway Dublin services. Minister, those two sets alone would dramatically transform rail services right across the west of Ireland, connecting Mayo, Roscommon, Galway and Westmead for the first time since the foundation of the state, providing the type of transformation that the OECD is calling for. Um, I don't disagree with you. There's huge potential from the services you mentioned. The, the allocation of those ICR carriages is a matter which Aaron and Aaron are going to have to decide on an operational basis. They're their best place to see where the growth is. What's interesting, what I hear from the company, is that since we as a government reduced a 50% reduction in fares for those under 24 and a 20% reduction for all passengers, there's been a massive increase in demand particularly for the services outside the greater, on rail outside the Greater Dublin area. So uh, I, I don't disagree. Where we provide high quality public transport services, the Irish people respond by taking them up. We've seen it, another example you could quote or cite is when we reopened the rail services to Ennis from Limerick. People said it would never take off, it's hugely popular. So I don't disagree with you on the potential for those shuttle services, as it were, ICR services from Athlone, either up to Westport or down to, to, to Galway. That then is an operational manager matter for those carriages are starting to come in, but it takes a period of time before they're fully commissioned. They have to be uh, safety and all of the other technical arrangements. There's nothing restricting Aaron Rodair and if they see, see that as the... I'm intervening in putting the funding into public transport, in reducing fares and encouraging particularly the development of Cork, Galway, Waterford, Limerick thank, thank as you. our priorities for investment you, in transport.